Obi Doo. It's everyone's uh, favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. But today we're going to look at uh, a, a much more modern vintage lens. This being the Nikon uh, AF Nikkor 18 to 35 millimeter, uh, 3.5 to 4.5 D ED. I guess that means erectile dysfunction. I guess I don't know what that means. What do you think it means? Oh, it's a spherical too. Wow. Um, it's all plastic. It's nice plastic. It's nice build quality. Uh, it's an F-mount lens. It's autofocus, but get a load of this. Nikon made an FTZ adapter uh, to let F-mounts fit on the Z cameras. This is the Z50, which you know I rave about all the time. Uh, but it doesn't do autofocus. It does everything else. It gives you a focus confirmation uh, where the red... Uh, Rectangle turns green and you get, you don't have to like uh, use the magnifier to zoom up and check the focus uh, It puts over all the uh, stuff into the excess like uh, what um, F number you, you picked and what the zoom ratio is it does all that great stuff uh, Because you see it's 3.5 to 4.5 uh, There's another extra like uh, marking here. So if you went in the manual mode Let's see how you go in the manual mode right that's f16 and then there's another dot there what does that mean so that's scary but now the camera does all that stuff right so that's great um this is a really nice lens it's sharp it has vibrant colors it's uh got lowish distortion it's not completely distortion free but it's low with distortion i bought it with the uh the lens hood but i seldom use it but it's still flare resistant uh, of course, it has the CPU contacts, so what it does is it tells this camera, I'm here, this lens is here. I think all these manufacturers, they put, uh, they put a, a lookup table that corrects all the misgivings of the lens. But this lens is a really nice lens. It's, I highly recommend it. It's a newer lens. Uh, it's not like uh, 30 or 40 years old. Maybe it's only 10 or 20 years old. Uh, this day may still actually be in production for all, for all I know. They are relatively available at a very modest price and in uh, excellent condition. So if you have uh, uh, if you have an old uh, F-type uh, mount uh, Nikon camera or a DSLR or even you have the modern Z camera, I highly recommend this lens that you use it. It's uh, it's a nice lens. Uh, what else is good about it? Um, oh, well, it does have, it's not a G or a gelded lens. It actually has a um, F-stop ring. So you could put it on a dumb adapter and use it on any mirrorless camera, right? But since uh, it transfers over all the information into the camera, that's why I use it on this. And then you could compare this to, say, the other... Uh, uh, real vintage lenses I've been uh, give posting examples about. Uh, there's some interesting things about the, the Z50. The Z50 doesn't have built-in uh, in-body uh, image stabilization, except if you go into movie mode. If you go into movie mode, then you could turn on quote-unquote uh, electronic uh, VR, which is vibration reduction. And I did a test video. I guess it helps because, you know, if you're an old boomer like me and your hands jiggle ever so slightly, uh, it gets rid of the jiggles for you. So that's great. But only in movie mode. In any other mode, you have to use the fast shutter speed. So uh, I find this lens to be an excellent lens. It's very cheap, readily available. I think you should go get one. And uh, let's look at some uh, uh, photographic examples, shall we? The AF Nikkor 18-35 is a key lens for vintage lenses. It's a more modern vintage lens. It's made out of plastic. I guess it has advanced coatings. Uh, it's got to be when it introduced 10 or 15 years ago. And that's uh, vintage enough. It may still be in production. Uh, I'm not sure about that. But they're cheap. Uh, I mean affordable and readily available in good condition. And I really like uh, the micro contrast. The sharpness is outstanding, even in the corners. Uh, 
what sort of f-stops did I use? Is it a bright sunny day to a bright overcast? Um, so I use ISO 400. I used f8, 11, 14, and 16. That's the range I went with. I used the uh, the focus confirmation in the Z50, which is like a red square, and you can move it around so I keep it in the center. And then when you get to the focus, closer to the focus, it blinks rapidly, and when you're on focus, it becomes a solid green uh, square. And that's the way I went. I didn't have to use um, the the focus magnifier adopt, you know, where you just uh, zoom up on it and tap it away and recompose. So that was a, a helpful uh, benefit of this lens. And look at the sharpness. It's beautiful. This is some ice. This uh, rock is encased in ice. And these are just uh, lines, like contour lines, of where the water was. Now check these reeds out. You see these reeds, same reeds with other lenses. And then look in the bottom right. And look at that. That is super sharp. That's around F14. Uh, and it's a, this is one of the best lenses I have. There's no doubt about it. I say go out and get one. Find one and get one. Now, since it has an aperture ring, you could use it with a dumb adapter on any mirrorless camera, and you're good to go. Or if you happen to have the FTZ adapter, you could use it on the, uh, a Z camera and get all those goody features except autofocus. And if you have a... Uh, a Nikon DSLR that supports the, this autofocus, then you're good to go. So you have a modern vintage lens. Look at the fine detail here. Oh, I was just uh, shocked at this. You know, it was a really nice lens. Now, this is that 35 millimeters, these ducks in a row, and they came out pretty good. This is just a center, that was just a center crop, too. I could have uh, pulled out the EXIF data and pasted it in the picture, but then it would get too busy. Now, uh, it looks like there's some blurriness in the background trees, but that could be because uh, the focus was on the, the nearer branches. Now, the focus was on this uh, knockdown tree, and this is some uh, twigs and forest litter in the foreground, and it is really excellently sharp and well-defined. This is just a center uh, crop at 35 millimeters. I know there's just these all these weird blasted branches around, and uh, uh, you know, it's just a texture thing and tonality thing. You know, watching the different states of decay. Now, all I did adjust a lot of the levels or uh, the tones, like mostly the highlights or the uh, the shadows. I had to bring them up, uh, just tweak them in a little bit. I didn't do any uh, other post processing. Like, uh, I really didn't have to adjust the colors. Uh, although the, the automatic white balance did seem to shift, but that's a camera problem, not a lens problem. Uh, this is a, a center crop, 35 millimeters. That's rather a close-up, and it's got fine detail. Excellent lens. So my philosophy is uh, any lens that works is a good lens. No doubt about it. You know, I went uh, bought all these lenses uh, because they're cheap and readily available and good condition from other manufacturers and I slap them on the mirrorless cameras because I want to see what they do. Did they live up to their reputation or uh, is it all BS? Well, this is a key lens. You should get this lens. Just think, you get this lens, it's 18 to 35 millimeters. You get the Canon FD uh, 35 to 70 millimeter and then what would you use for uh, longer than that? Well, longer than that, and vintage would be a little tough because uh, uh, 70 to 210 or 300, you'd really want to take advantage of autofocus. And uh, the only problem is uh, uh, the older lenses that you could get dumb adapters for, then you could use them on any mirrorless camera. But if you have the, the Z series of cameras, I recommend the Fringer adapter. The Fringer uh, EOS to Z adapter because it moves everything over. It has contacts for the oil focus and there must be a chip inside of it that lets the lens talk to the camera. You slap any EOS, uh, uh, Canon EOS lens on a Z camera and you go and it, and it works beautiful. And uh, I'm a Canon guy. 
I admit I'm a Canon guy. I've been a Canon guy for years because they were cheap and I couldn't really afford Nikon uh, back in the olden days. And um, well, I have a lot of Canon glass. And uh, let's face it, both Canon and Nikon, they make great glass. And e e even Pentax makes great glass. They all do. They all have their line of special lenses that are really top notch. And of course, you pay big bucks for it. Like the 70 to 300. Um, 4.5 to 5.6 L lens, which has built an IS. Well, you know, that thing is a beautiful lens. So, a good kit would be this 18 to 35, uh, the Canon FD 35 to 70, and then uh, the 70 to uh, 300 L lens from Canon. But then, you know, every lens has a different look to it. Well, look at the sharpness of these branches. That's unreal. That's uh, uh, amazing. Now, I was shooting a lot of other lenses on this very same camera, and they just weren't doing as good. Now, it could be because this thing, and I'll say this over and over again. This is just my suspicion. It could be that um, there's a lookup table in that camera that would correct for any defects the lens has, like... Uh, chromatic aberration or uh, flare or all sorts of other things. I love neon. Neon's so cool. And then buildings uh, have murals on them. That's public art as far as I'm concerned. I don't know who these people are, but it's uh, on the highway. And you drive down, you see these two big faces looking at you. It's a vitamin store. Now here's a town that has a main street. Of course, main streets are dying. Now, these buildings must have been beautiful looking when they were new, but now they're 100 years old or more, and I guess they're near the end of their economic life. And um, <clears throat> this town is going through some urban renewal where they're putting up uh, multi-story uh, big glass and concrete buildings to replace them. And then a lot of this character is going to be gone. It's going to become a homogenous uh, in a modern way. Now, what's behind these doors? They have King Kong behind these doors so he can't get out and wreck the town. I don't know. It looks pretty scary, all secured and everything. Barber shops, tattoos, pizza parlors, um, other ethnic eateries. That's what these towns have. And... Uh, Sometimes a, a store will open up, be a couple of years, and it's gone. Look at the price of gas. Max has been there for a long time. Uh, they renovated the outside. They put it, uh, a facade on it, made it look better. This building, this is more of a modern building, although it's been there at least 10 or 15 years. And this is the way it's going. Everything's going to become, you know, these modern rectangular, angular uh, uh, brick buildings. This one's cool because it has like mirrored windows and they're like funhouse mirrors. And this is like a more original stuff, street. But I would imagine all these streets are going to be, uh, all these uh, stores are going to be renovated eventually. You'll see a lot of these lamp posts in these pictures. Like uh, here's a lamp post. These look suspiciously like the ones I've seen in Hackensack. These towns, they want to be quaint. Now, if you look at this lamppost, it has these round discs. And in Hackensack, they put an H in there, which would stand for Hackensack. And I think I've only seen one or two of these lampposts that had PL in that little disc, which stands for Pompton Lakes. So you can see some uh, barrel distortion here. Uh, I guess it'd be corrected, but, you know, that just gives a... And this is wide-angle distortion here. Uh, all lines meet at infinity so it has barrel distortion and it has distortion of perspective 40 year anniversary wow you know there are some stores that just stick around forever and then some just come and go and you see that you don't go to town for six months and you say oh what happened to that place he's gone and they all have uh, 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 signs and stuff in the window uh, and that's uh, I try to capture that because it's ephemeral and you never know when a, ta a store is going to get out of business and uh, their, their window will change. So here's some natural brick, here's some painted brick, 
Here's a modern door and an old time door. Wex Army Navy Store, October 5th, 1933. But it's not a Wex anymore. It's uh, some sort of Windsor School. And I think that went into business too. I just like the red, blue, and black here. And of course, all these uh, towns, town main streets, they have uh, the antique store. And I always like to stop in and see what they got, any new additions or if something got sold. It's like a museum. You know, you don't have to go to a museum. It's just on the street. Wells Fargo. Here's an old bank building that's still the bank. A lot of these uh, towns on Main Street, uh, the bank building gets repurposed to something else. So I think that's amazing. This one's a, still a bank. Yeah, Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. This used to be a real train station where you caught the train. And now it's a, a used book, record, and CD store. And here's a detail of the caboose, which I found interesting. And here's a, a cool, look at this, that's amazing. This is a super sharp lens, super sharp. Micro contrast, IQ, uh, tonality, it's a, it's a great lens. I highly recommend it. It is another key lens. Monica's, I just like the way this, uh, uh, these bricks went. It's amazing, Monica's uh, Italian restaurant. So the bottom dollar is get yourself one of these lenses.